Joining me are Overwatch game director Aaron Keller and production director Paul Hale. First, how are you two doing? I'm doing great. Excited. Yes, me too. So excited to be talking about this. And I'm so excited to have you both here. Now, uh, there was a ton of news which dropped over the weekend and the community has been buzzing. And I'm excited to be able to sit down with you two now to unpack all of this for everyone watching at home. Now, the biggest announcement had to be the news that Overwatch 2 is releasing on October 4th as a free-to-play live service. That's incredible and that must be very, very exciting for you and your team. Yeah, Overwatch 2, it's been a labor of love for our, our team. We're all dedicated to creating a game that our community will enjoy for years to come. We also want players to feel like there was always something new for them to play or experience in the game. These goals really led us down the path of developing Overwatch 2 as an always-on living game. One that continues to evolve and expand through seasonal content drops and keeps the game as fresh and fun to play long after it turns on. We're lucky to have such a passionate and creative set of players, and we know that they've been craving more ways to play the game they love so much. In recent years, we haven't done a good enough job at delivering that for our fans, and we feel their frustration. We took a hard look at our strategy for Overwatch 2 to make sure that we could deliver new heroes, new maps, modes, and more to the community on a frequent and consistent basis. As an Overwatch fan, of course, that's music to my ears. We know that's the community's top priority, and we feel like we have the right approach to be able to deliver that for them well into the future. How are you and the team planning to deliver on that promise? Uh, well, the very first step is getting the game into everyone's hands, and that's going to happen on October 4th when we transition Overwatch 1 and invite every PC and console player to drop in and experience Overwatch 2's reimagined PvP experience. And that's just the beginning. Our plan is to deliver a steady drumbeat of new content every nine weeks through free seasonal updates, ensuring that there's always something new to play, chase, unlock in Overwatch 2. Well, that all sounds amazing, and it's so much of it too. And now, I am sure everyone at home wants to hear more details. Of course, uh, I'd be happy to share a look at the road ahead. Our journey is going to begin on October 4th, when Overwatch 2 releases free to play. This includes three new heroes, six new maps, a brand new mode, and more. The new heroes include Sojourn, Junker Queen, and a brand new support hero that we'll reveal in the months ahead. Our new maps will take players across the globe to iconic locations. Our new PvP mode called Push will challenge teams in new and exciting ways. Players will also be able to unlock new cosmetic items through the in-game store and battle pass, as well as complete weekly challenges and experience the start of Competitive Play 2.0. And of course, everyone will also be able to access the revamped heroes, PvP maps, and fan favorite game modes from the first Overwatch game. Our next season will arrive in early December, where we will introduce a new tank hero along with a new map. We'll have more themed cosmetic items for players to earn and unlock in an all-new battle pass and also in the in-game store. And in 2023, we'll continue to release a new season every nine weeks with either a new hero, new map, or new mode. Players will get the chance to earn more themed content complete weekly challenges, access new battle passes, and more. There will always be something new to play. In 2023, we'll also begin releasing our new PvE experiences, which we're really excited about. We're really looking forward to being able to share more with the community as we get closer to releasing them. I know we've seen more and more games shift towards that free-to-play model in recent years, and it really does seem like players have taken a liking to it, especially shooter fans. Um, did that have an impact on deciding to make Overwatch 2 uh, go free-to-play? Honestly, not really. For us, free-to-play games offer a lot of advantages. From the very start, Overwatch was designed to be a social experience. We have heroes of different roles, and they all rely on each other in, in order to accomplish their objectives in the game. So. It requires a lot of teamwork. We also see that outside of our game, within our community, with fan art, cosplay, and the Overwatch League. We know our fans are having the most fun when they're playing with their friends or meeting new ones, and the move to free-to-play makes it easy for everyone to just drop in, play the game, join the community, whether they own Overwatch 1 or not. And with Overwatch 2 crossplay enabled, people can play together no matter what platform they prefer to play on. It's always been a game that stood for inclusivity and community. 
When they see the roster of heroes, we want them to feel like there's someone there that they can feel connected to. Because the Overwatch universe is and always will be a place for everyone. And we feel like we have an incredible opportunity with Overwatch 2 to really embrace it. I can't wait for October when this incredible journey will begin for all of us. We're called Neons, sinners plucked from hell to do God's dirty work. But I'm finding it hard to believe we're in heaven. One of the things that gets us up in the morning, happy to work on Overwatch, it's first and foremost a really special game, the way we portray a bright future. Everyone on the team is really proud of it. We're bringing in all new PvP experience. We're transforming from a 6v6 to a 5v5. Changed a lot of how we design heroes and actually how we balance them as well. We had to go back and look at all the heroes and all the tanks especially and make sure that everyone fits and works really well on this new paradigm. This newfound importance on each individual player to feel like they can really make an impact on the game. We're trying to obviously maintain the original character's identity and overall silhouette, colors, statements, but also kind of bring something a little bit new. We can make balance adjustments really quick. As fast as our design team sees that there's an issue. Jeff Goodman and the rest of the hero design team have been loving all the feedback coming in. They have tons of awesome ideas about uh, how to change or uh, adjust balance. So heroes like Arissa got a, a major rework. We're looking at how many barriers are in place. You think about Overwatch, you think of these really protective shields. But we're looking at it from the perspective of, you know, what if she didn't have that? What would that even look like? We're just always looking for great opportunities to change for the better. 
I'm really excited about how we've refreshed uh, all the maps. I think we've done a lot of great changes, especially for PvP. A lot of our old stuff just looks gorgeous now. We've done a lot with the art and with lighting and shadows and just made stuff pop a little bit more. We also added some options with like daytime, nighttime. I think all of the Overwatch 2 maps are custom recorded in the actual place. We've hired a field recorder to actually go capture ambience of the real world location. We realize it's a subtle detail, but those are the things that really make these maps come to life. We have done a pass playing all the old maps in 5v5 and adjusting things for that kind of setup, whether it's moving cover around just a little bit or tweaking a door. In the beta, we're listening to feedback, so we're going to improve each map based on what the players have been seeing. We've been working on these for a little while now, and we're really excited about it. We were really happy with the positive feedback once people were able to play it, and I think it was an important milestone for us to get it in players' hands. Competitive play is a different thing to a lot of different people. And we really didn't think we were providing enough tools and measures to actually help players out if they did want to improve. We're reworking our scoreboard to provide more information uh, to players as they're like, playing through the match. But then once they finish the match, we're actually going to provide an after-action report. So you can look at the report while you're in queue. You could actually go into uh, your history section and look, we want to work towards providing you with information that will help you improve your game. We've been getting feedback from a lot of different areas, from our you know, community team, like streamers, influencers. We've also been getting a lot of feedback from Overwatch League players. We do want to actually provide a bit of like feeling of progression. So one of the other changes we're making alongside that is not making your skill rating quite so granular. Right now, it's a very hard number. Instead of a numeric skill rating, we're adding these skill tiers within the larger ones. If you see someone at a really high skill tier, you know that that person is not just that good of an Overwatch player, but they've earned it. One of the cool things about Overwatch 2 is it has this new push game mode and maps along with it. Push is a PvP game mode on several different new maps. We've been playing it in the beta, and we've actually been using it in Overwatch League as well. And once we started playtesting it, it was kind of an instant hit. There's a level, it has one path that goes all the way through it from one base to the other, and in the middle is TS1. And he's this lovable robot with a pair of barricades next to him. And the players are essentially fighting for control, and if they take control by taking out the other enemy team, TS1 will move a barricade towards the enemy base. To win, you either get that barricade all the way to the enemy base, or after a certain amount of time, did you move your barricade farther than the enemy team did? It's a very fair game mode. I think the maps are great. It provides for a lot of different like locations where a lot of great fights can happen. We developed a lot of engine upgrades in the game, so this allows us to do faster iteration. This was a huge effort by our engine team to allow the art team to build faster, more detailed environments in a shorter amount of time. You will get to experience the game world. We wanted to feel much more immersive. Overwatch 2 is a dream for audio features. It's everything we've ever really wanted to do. We, we really go into every little bit of detail, trying to find uh, a way that every sound will cut through. When we started on Overwatch 1, we were really, really focused on the headphone mix. We, we thought for you know a PC-first kind of game, we realized that people listen to Overwatch in all types of different places. So now we support home theater Dolby Atmos in the game. Now consoles offer all kinds of new things too, like 3D audio that we're supporting. There's new voice lines, new conversations between all of the favorite heroes. And we have so many, there'll be more that'll just come to the game over time. We've written 25,000 voice lines for Overwatch 2. Going up. So tons of new features. And the reality is that Overwatch scales even beyond that, all the way up to giant sports arenas for our Overwatch finals. Everything you like about Overwatch, you're gonna get that in Overwatch 2, but even more. You know, we're really listening to that feedback. A lot of it we felt like, man, we really think this is going to be super fun and we just need people to be able to play it. October 4th is really just the beginning.
give you war. As Hilda delves deeper into the quest for her lost father, she will encounter many dangers and challenges in the city of Aphes. Let us introduce you to one of the main adversaries that Hilda will have to confront, Eulalia, the Prey. Famous for her beautiful voice, Eulalia used to be the most recognized singer during Aphes' glorious golden age. But, like so many others, Eulalia would fall victim to the curse that spread across the city a thousand years ago. The famine brought on by the Asterigos changed her into something else. She turned to an evil cult, the Ethrus, and dedicated herself to it, becoming a symbol by using her reputation and voice to lure more people to join the cult. The encounter starts with Eulalia flying around the top of the seats while sending attacks like voice shock blasts, feather blades, and cyclones. Occasionally, she'll descend to the ground to fight Hilda herself with even more dangerous claw and wing strikes. After some back and forth fights, Eulalia would fly to the sky and use her voice and feather blades to attack Hilda again. And this time, she even calls upon several harpy minions to assist her. During this phase, Hilda must fight the minions while watching out for Eulalia's deadly attacks from above. Once Hilda has dealt with the minions, Eulalia will land again and this time with despair as she will cause feather storms to swoop around the amphitheater. This is when the battle culminates. The feather storms will continually fire sharp blades as Hilda cautiously counters Eulalia's onslaught in close combat. In the end, only the strongest will survive. We hope you enjoy this preview and we can't wait to share more about the world of Asterigos with you. Boy, oh boy. The price of freedom is steep. Zach speaking. Making progress, Zach. And Geo. I can cut loose, right? Within reason. It's showtime! Soldier First Class Genesis. A month ago, he went missing during a mission in Wutai. You know, I've never actually seen you use that. Don't you think it's sort of a waste? Use brings about wear, tear, and rust. And that's a real waste.
Project G gave birth to the man we know as Genesis. Project G. Project Genesis. Settle down, Zack the Puppy. <laughs> what do you know? Shit, relax, dogs! Hello? Heaven? Not quite. It's a church. By the way, what is your dream? To become first? Is it? No. To become a hero. Ah, oh, good. Unattainable dreams are the best kind. Embrace your dreams. And whatever happens, protect your honor. As soldier! Come and get it! So we've developed a completely new destruction system from the ground up. What that really means is uh, a lot more visual fidelity. It's fully 3D now, so everything is fractured and materials act like proper material. Bricks and, and wood uh, will, will fracture and, and crumble um, like, like bricks and wood. This new tech with the building destruction is very exciting, and but at the same time, it's not easy. Uh, there's a lot of effort goes into it, and there are a lot of people get involved. Um, not only artists, there's a, a tech artists, you know, programmers, designers to ensure that we're achieving the look right and it feels right for the player. Uh, we do have destruction that can happen uh, on a building where it starts to collapse and can crush the units below. And depending on how the damage to the building occurs, if it has a slightly less damage uh, and depending on how it gets taken down, you could actually use the uh, footprint of the building for cover. Uh, when a, a mortar hits the uh, a building, no longer will you just see a, uh, a standard uh, cutout. Instead, what you'll see is the actual hole that would have been generated where it hit. And not only that, the plaster will have flaked off. And you'll see that brick behind. Uh, the brick might even be damaged, and you'll see maybe something else underneath that. With the tools we're using these days, combined with uh, improvements in graphics technology, you know, we're doing stuff that we could only imagine we could have done uh, in the past. Just the number of pieces of, of geometry uh, is is pretty fabulous. It must be like at least a hundred times more uh, physics. So one of the exciting applications to our new destruction system is the ability to pre-destroy maps. Um, we have this, uh, this, this option to basically, while the map is loading, um, we can drop a bunch of bombs over top of the map and then it, it all explodes and blows up and then we can apply additional dressings uh, to that map and then when the player loads in, they see this beautifully destroyed map um, and that's all ready for them to play around in. In the previous game, uh, we would have probably provided more smoke to hide some things. Uh, and you know what? Our effects really were amazing uh, for our previous titles. But uh, now all of that is something that we're actually putting into the game. Uh, all the destruction you see is almost a one-to-one -one relationship now. Uh, if you saw a table get destroyed, that table is destroyed in its pieces, and those pieces will be uh, strewn about. And uh, when you're destroying the building, the same thing. So yeah, we're putting tremendous effort in creating this building destruction. We want to make it even more authentic and realistic. I have a feeling there will be many people who will end up playing and they will press tactical pause just to even turn the screen a little bit to take advantage of seeing all the destruction and all of its glory in that, that one, one frame. Because it, it is pretty amazing.
What we've done, that's set in stone. The past is forever. But the future, even if it has been written, can be changed. So focus on the future, not the past. He wants to finish what he started. He wants to reclaim his birthright. And rule over the planet with Genova at his side. I saw you lying there. I figured it was too late. Wait, what are you implying? That I died? That I'm some kind of imposter? You were here with me, five years ago. Where are you? What happened to you? I'm trying so hard to find you. Sorry. Feel like I failed you. Oh, Bumble didn't see you there. Bumbo here to tell you about Bumbo Game. It called Legend of Bumbo! <laughs> Legend of Bumbo is prequel to Binding of Isaac. That means it comes first. <laughs> Bumbo Game, great! It have coin and fist. And Bumbo got trash! Bumbo just remember another thing. There's Mo Bumbo. There's a fat guy and a weird one. And another thing. And it has like a casino zone and a skull game and tons and tons of spells. It got Big rock and nail board. They got needles, fishy hooks, finger hearts, and beans too. So that's why you should go buy Legend of Bumbo. Oh, there's coin. Give me that coin. Civilizations. Now even flea-ridden Vikings take us for fools. Rise up, Tutmas III, for our country! I, Imperial Pharaoh of the 18th Dynasty, buried by my side, my loyal... No time to waste. Egypt needs us.
rope is slapping the flagpole in the dark and driving snow. Four hundred miles behind me now. Four hundred more to go. Lately, I've been flowing past the world like time flows past a life. I've been looking at the faces, at the joy and the strife. We come to pass, not to say all that matters anyway. What will follow you? What will follow you? Whatever it takes. Never before have we waged war like this.
だから俺はシャナ王のことを守ると決めているがそれは主従を結んでいるからじゃない俺はいつだってお前の味方だ父上が義朝様の忠実な部下だったように俺もお前に忠誠を誓うと決めている俺に寄りかかってもいいかな平家の子である前に武人として俺としてお前と勝負がしたい俺はこのままでいるつもりはないからなそれだけは覚えておけそのまま動くなもういいぞ貴様らは武蔵坊弁慶の名を聞いたことがある俺とお前のどちらが先に弁慶を捕らえられるか勝負といこうではないか千本まであとわずかそれでも拙者はどんなことがあってもあなたをお守りいたす主である殿に必要とされる家来にとってそれ以上の喜びはございませぬゆえ殿には心残りがあるのですか源氏の忘れがたみと立ち回った末に取り逃がすなど面目が立たぬでは収まらぬわ父上お気持ちは分かりましたしかしシャナオを殺してしまうのもそう警官ここはこの友森にお任せくださいませんかそこまで断言されてしまうと逆に見たくてたまらなくなる連れて帰ってそばに置きながらゆっくりその気になるのを待つとしようかそなたを捕まえただけそうされたいと思っていたからすごいとうとう源氏が立ち上がる時が来たんだね頼朝様もちろん挙兵するんでしょかもしれんなシャナオお前の天命は私と共に決して忘れぬ将のもと働くものであれば求めて当然のものであるお前がシャナオ近くに寄るなよ